Hi guys! Today I am doing a bookshelf tour! And shelves and desk tour. And you are also getting a bedroom tour! That's because my room is so small that the only thing that it has, it's actually the shelves. So if you look at them, you look at the whole room! First, I'm really sorry for all the time it took me to get this video up. It's just that it took me a really long time to edit, but here it is now. I am going to be doing this Katie-tastic style with a mini tour in the first couple of minutes where you can see all of my shelves, all of my books, and just a quick overview of everything, how I arrange my books, and with a longer version next where I will show you every single book I have. And I know sometimes bookshelf tours can feel a bit long, so I tried to make this one as fast-paced and dynamic as I possibly could. And I tried really hard to avoid a shaky camera at all costs. Let's get this started! Here's a quick view of the whole room. Here's another view. You can see the bed and my mini shelf. And here we have my main bookshelf. And as you can see, it's arranged by colors. Well, sort of arranged by colors. You can't really see the bottom shelf, but you can see the first five. And there's my dog. Here's another view of it. <laughs> you can see my goal list for whatever occasion I need. Maybe I'll show you how to make one in the future if you want. Here are my top shelves and a better view of my desk where I have my TV and, well, my laptop. Now let's see what I have in my shelves. This is the very top of my bookshelves. They are mostly black books. My Magic 8 Ball, a couple of just dark green books at the very far end. But most of them are black. Now here you can see that I have a mix of colors. I go from pink to purple to light blue to green and to a darker green. On this one, it's a bit complicated. I have white with a little bit of orange, then it goes to um, yellow and orange, then orange, then red, darker red, until it goes to sort of pink, dark purple, dark blue, then light blue, and then it goes into a sort of aqua green and blue. I know it all sounds really weird, but it basically goes from red to blue. Here I have dark books, not black. And a funny thing here is that all of them are hardcovers. It was totally by accident. It, it just happened to have a lot of dark hardcover books. And over here, it's a bit of a weird shelf. I'm not exactly sure of what's going on exactly, but it goes from white to gray to dark colors and then to light blues and pinkish and purplish. My original intentions were to make it a, a sort of pinkish purplish shelf, but I don't have that many books with a spine that's purplish and pinkish. So I just did as best I could with it. Um, but, it but all in all, I think it turned out pretty well. At the very bottom shelf, you can see that I have sort of dark reds and dark pinks and goes to purples and blues again. It's mainly books that I either have the fourth or the fifth book in the series because I want it or something and they don't really have anywhere else to go and also my encyclopedias and research books and stuff. This is what I like to call the TBR desk because I have not read any of the books that are in it apart from my Sir Dessen collection. You'll notice that at the very top, I have only hardcover books. Then here I have my little paperback section. With a little butterfly and an hourglass. Over here I have my tall book sections. 
and my mini used book section. Now here you will see my top shelves, which don't really have a particular order. The books are sort of by color, but there's nothing really going on here. I had a huge, huge pile of books right beside my desk. That one, yeah, that one, it was twice as big. It was just ridiculous. And my books kept falling over and they were getting damaged. So I got these shelves and I just threw the books there. Not really caring of how they looked or if they were by color or whatever. I just wanted my books safe. At the very top I have my Buddha, an angel, and my name in Chinese letters. You will see that they are sort of by color, but in the end I would like for the shelf to be just of hardcover books. And down here I have some illustrations from the Infernal Devices series by Cassandra Clare. That's Tessa and Will and Gabriel Lightwood. A little knitted bear that Yell from the Itzel Library gave me. A lemon. I'll take these down so you can look at the books as well. Okay, here, um, sort of by color, mainly dark books and I would like for this to be a series shelf. I already have a few series, but yes, I would like for it to just be series in the future. Hopefully in a year or so, these shelves will have a theme for them. Here I have the mini Target shelves, where I have small books, some sort of bluish books, Markers, pens, some other stuff. Over here, you can see I have some makeup, perfumes, uh, my bookmarks. Sh the words, shake it out, painted. That's in honor of the Florence and the Machine song. And those are my bookshelves and desk. Now I'm going to show you every single book I have. And for this next part, I recommend you have a snack with you. Let's do this. So this is the very top of the bookshelf. And I took um, the little jack down for a moment. And first we have the Double Daring Book of Girls. We have, of course, Twilight, New Moon, Eclipse, and Breaking Dawn. These are the first books that I ever read. This is the series that got me into reading. And even if I no longer really like them anymore, they still have a very special place in my heart. Next we have the Twilight Director's Notebook by Catherine Hartwick, the director. Twilight Graphic Novel Volume 1, uh, which was really pretty, I really enjoyed it. I don't have Volume 2, this one was a gift from my dad, but um, I never came around to getting the second one, which I really need to get. The Host by Stephanie Meyer, which I really, really liked, even more so than Twilight. I enjoyed it a lot, and I actually thought it was going to be a standalone, but it's a series? Although it seems like Stephanie Meyer forgot that it was a series and never wrote the sequels. Next we have the Immortal series by Alison Noel. I don't think I had ever hated a series so much as I did with this one. First we have Evermore, which was not too bad, it was decently good. Then we have Blue Moon, which was just... no. No, 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 no. The weakest character I had ever encountered I hated this book with all my guts and soul. And then we have Shadowland, which is the third book in the series. I don't know why I bought this one, but I did, and I read the first chapter, and I immediately went and sold the book on eBay. And then by a sort of joke of destiny and a giveaway, I won a big pack of books, and there it was again. So I now have the third book again in my hands. Bitten by R. L. Stein. We had two copies of this one that I won, um, one I kept for myself and one I already gave away. Old Magic by Marianne Curley, Night World Volume 1 by Ella Day Smith, which includes Secret Vampire Di Di Daughters of Darkness and Spellbinder. The Forest of Hands and Teeth by Carrie Ryan. Next I have an art copy of Shadow Hills by Anastasia Hopkins, marked by PC Increasing Cast. Wake by Alyssa McMahon. Demon Glass by Rachel Hawkins. Uh, it's an ARC copy. The official cover is that one. I don't have the first book, but I've heard nothing but amazing things of the Hex Hall series, so I'm hoping I can one day get onto that series. Beastly by Alex Flynn, and a beat-up copy of City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. And Witch Season by Jeff Mariotte, and of course, the Magic 8-Ball. On the next shelf I have, 
an advanced copy I want of Envy by Greg Olson, which is part of the Empty Coffin novels. Between Here and Forever by Elizabeth Scott. Before I Fall by Lauren Oliver. Great novel, by the way. Shine by Lauren Miracle. I hope that's how you say it, Miracle. And Twine by Heather Dixon. Love the cover, and it's one of my favorite retellings of all time. Fixing Delilah by Sarah Oakler. I love Sarah Oakler. The Dead Tossed Waves by Carrie Ryan. Deadly Little Secret by Laurie Floria Stolarz. What? It was pretty cool and creepy. Putting Makeup on Dead People by Jen Violi. Take Me There by Sand Called Santi. Intervention! I got a bit mixed up in this part and I totally forgot to mention Bloom by Elizabeth Scott. The Nature of Jade by Dev Coletti. Crush Control by Jennifer Javali. Javali? Seventeenth Summer by Maureen Dali. Dali? Dali? When It Happens by Suzanne Colasanti. North of Beautiful by Justina Chen Hetley. Two Way Street by Lauren Barnhold. Time Between Us by Tamara Ireland Stone. Beauty Queens by Libba Bray. Anna and the French Kiss by Stephanie Perkins. One Night It Changes Everything by Lauren Barnhold. Stay by Def Coletti. Great book. I think every young girl in the world should have this book. There's so much you can get out of it. So, so much. Catching Jordan by Miranda Kennelly. Flirting with Boys by Haley Abbott. Anatomy of a Boyfriend by Daria Snadowski. Snadowski. You Wish by Mandy Hubert. This one was really funny. Even if the main character was a bit difficult to like. And last, The Summer of Firsts and Last by Tara Ellen McVoy which was a birthday present when I turned 18. On the next shelf I have Zombie vs. Unicorns by Holly Black and Justine Larbalernsteer. Winter Girls by Lori Hulse Anderson. Sea Change by Amy Friedman. Take Me There by Curly Dean. Shiver by Maggie Steve Otter. Twenty Boy Summer, one of my favorite books of all time. Next, Bittersweet, also by Sarah Ogler. If I Stay by Gail Foreman, the second book in the If I Stay series, Where She Went, also by Gail Foreman. The Gathering by Kelly Armstrong. The View from the Top by Hilary Frank. Next, The Hollow Trilogy by Jessica Verde. First with The Hollow, The Haunted, and The Hidden. The Essence by Kimberly Durting, which is the second book in the Pledge series. I don't have the first one. Forbidden by Tavita Susuma. 13 Reasons Why by Jay Asher. The Statistical Probability of Love at First Sight by Jennifer E. Smith. Choker by Elizabeth Woods. Waiting for You by Suzanne Calasanti. Halo by Alexandra Adornetto. Adornetto. Stolen by Lucy Christopher. And Amy and Rogers Epic the Tour by Morgan Matson. On the next shelf we have Tempt by PC and Christine Cast, which is the sixth book in the House of Night series. Next it's Burned, which is the seventh book, also by PC and Christine Cast. And this one was my favorite in the series. I just love this one so much. And Awakened, which is the 8th book in the series, and I cannot believe that I didn't finish it. it. It was just, no, not good. Next, The Reckoning by Kelly Armstrong, which is the 3rd book in the Darkest Power series. Next, I have Captive by Curry Jones, which is the 2nd book in the Need series, and In Ties, which is the 3rd book in the series. Next, I have Fallen by Lauren Kate, gorgeous cover, lame story, just really lame. Then I have Torment, the second book in the series, which was just worse. Clockwork Princess by Cassandra Clare. And it's a signed copy. I, oh my god, this series was so, so good. It was 10 times better, if not 30 times better, than The Mortal Instruments. Loved it so much. And, of course, Clockwork Angel, which is the first book in the series. I don't have the second one, and I cannot believe it, because the second one was my favorite book in the series. And Clockwork Prince was actually better than Clockwork Angel. I highly recommend the series and I need to get the second book. Next they have Death Watch by Ari Burke. And I am going to move my pink lamp for a moment. Ooh, and look at this. Sleep Pillow Mist, which I got at Bath and Body Workshops for one dollar. I have no idea if this actually works, but it smells really really good when you spray it on your pillow. Let's continue. Next I have The Unbecoming of Mary Dyer by Michelle Hawkins. Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs. Crusade by Nancy Holder and Debbie Viggy. Angel Fall by Courtney Ellison Moulton. Crier's Cross by Lisa Magman. Incarnate by Katherine Fisher. 
No, that book is in Carceron. I apparently can't read and I got it confused with Incarnate by Jody Meadow, which is a great book. But that book is in Carceron by Katherine Fisher. Ripple by Mandy Hubert. Bleeding Violet by Dia Reeves. Reeves? And Elixir by Hilary Duff. On the next shelf, we start with the Across the Universe series by Beth Revis. We have Across the Universe, A Million Suns, and Shades of Earth, which just looks really bad with the rest of the series. Next, we have Nightshade by Andrea Kremer. Kremer? Something like Faith by Suzanne Colasanti. Tangled by Caroline Mackler. This Guy is Everywhere by Dandy Nelson, one of my favorites of all time. An advanced copy of Lovely Dark and Deep by Amy McNamara. An advanced copy I want of Shout Out by Cody, Co Cody Keplinger. The Earth, My Bud, and Other Big Ground Things by also Carolyn Mackler, which I um, I really enjoy Tangled, so I got this one, but I haven't read it yet. After by Amy Ifa, 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 Ifa. The Fifty Shades of Grey trilogy by E.L. James, starting with Fifty Shades of Grey, Fifty Shades Darker, and Fifty Shades Freed. And here I skipped Beautiful Disaster by Jimmy McGuire. Sorry. The first two books in the Crossfire series by Celia Day. It's Buried to You. And those things on the cover are handcuffs. I had no idea what they were when I first saw them. I was like, what is that? And Reflected in You, which I have not read yet. Then there's the first two books in the Hush Hush series by Becca Fitzpatrick. Starting with Hush Hush, which is an amazing cover. And then Crescendo. An ARC copy of Legend by Marie Lu, which I won. Academy 7 by Annie Osterlund. Osterlund? And Salvation by, yeah, the same author. <laughs> Annie Osterlund. Lund. My ARC copy I won of Lullaby by Amanda Hodkin, which is the second book in the Water Song novel series. The Keeper by Jessica Crawford Vernold, which is also a book I won. Another arc I won, which is My Life Undecided by Jessica Brody. Bleed by Laurie Farias Dolores. Um, Invincible Summer by Hannah Moskowitz. An arc copy I won of Why We Broke Up by Daniel Handler. And the illustrations in there are by Myra Kalmar. And my copy of Miley Cyrus, My Miles to Go. I used to really like her a couple of years ago. But yes, now I'm not exactly sure where it's still on my shelf. In the bottom shelf I have Hex, A Witch, An Angel Tale by Ramona Ray. Ghost Girl, Book 3, which is Lovesick by Tanya Hurley. Something like that. How to Make a Bird by Mar Mar Martin Murray. Yes. Shade, both part of the Shade series by Jerry Smith already. Ash by Melinda Lowe. Open Wounds or Wounds by Joseph Lunieves. A New, which is the first book in the Archers of Avalon series by Chelsea Fine. Girl vs. Boy by Yvonne Collins and Sandy Re Right Out. Super funny book. I loved it. And our copy of Darkest Mercy, which is the final book in the Wicked Lovely series. I think it's book five by Melissa Marr. And I don't have the first books in the series. The Morganville Vampires Volume 2 by Rachel Kane. Don't have Volume 1. This one has Midnight Alley and Feast of Fools. My copy of Blood Promise from the Vampire Academy. This is Book 4 by Rochelle Med. An advanced reader's copy of Geek Girl by Cindy C. Bennett, which I won. Grounding Queen by Stephanie Campbell, which was a really bad book. I, I, no, I didn't like it at all. Dangerous Angels by... Francesca Lea Block, which is a bind-up of the Wetsy Bat series. In our copy, I won of Maximum Ride, The Angel Experiment, which is book two, I mean book one, in the Maximum Ride series by James Patterson. The real cover is that one. Neverland by Kaylin Gao, which is book two in the Never Night series. Saving You, Saving Me by Kaylin Gao. Notes from the Universe by Mike Dooley or something. Which just had little inspirational notes um, in every page. It's a book that one of my um, professors in junior got in junior high gave me. She was really into all those stuff like the secret movie and stuff. So she gave me that one. 
Levelings 2009 Magical Almanac. Into le- I was really into learning about religions when I was in junior high. And it turns out that Wiccans, it's actually a thing. There's people that actually practice magical and spiritual things. So I wanted to learn more about it and I bought this book. So it's a very cool insight into what Wiccans are. And Her Dear and Loving Husband by Meredith Allard. And over here I just have a bit of random stuff. I have my drawings. My Arthur Spider Wakefield Guide to the Fantastical World Around You. And then over here I just have my um, little Carlitos encyclopedias, my crystals and gems books, my Spiderwigs field guide into the fantastical wor- world around you, um, the human brain. I love learning about the human brain, um, my drawings, and yeah. In this part of the pile, I have. A couple of books in Spanish, um, a few school books or something that I don't want to throw away, but that I don't, I don't, I don't think I'll ever read. And then over here is my Edgar Allan Poe collection, which I've only read the poem so far. I still need to read his books. And then here I have some books that may interest you. I have Unwelcome, which is book two in the Archangel Academy novel by Michael Michael Griffo, which is an arc I won. My Rectus Journal by Carrie Smith, which I do use. A little Spanish kids books, which I really liked when I was a kid. The Last Lecture by Randy Pouchwood and Jeffrey Saslow. What? The Art of War by Soon Tzu. In Spanish. Graceling by Christine Kishore, which I borrowed. The Mortal Instruments Book 4, City of Fallen Angels by Cassandra Clare, which is also borrowed. House of Shadows by Rachel Nomeyer. An advanced copy of Vampire Crush by A.M. Robinson, which I won. An advanced copy of Razorland by Anne Aguirre. And Lauren Conrad's L.A. Candy. Uh, there's the Edgar Allan Poe collection. Now on the TBR desk I have... We have That Summer, Someone Like You, Keeping the Moon, This Lullaby, the Truth About Forever, Just Listen, which was actually the first Sarah Dessen book I ever read, and also the book that started my love for contemporary YA reads, Lock and Key, and advanced copy of What Happened to Goodbye, which I won, and my personal favorite Sarah Dessen book, Along for the Ride. Then we have Dearly Departed by Leah Habel, 52 Reasons to Hate My Father by Jessica Brody, Grave Mercy by Robin Lefebvre's Lefebvre. Tiger Lily by Jody Lynn Anderson. Various Possessions by Martha Scabbis. Try Not to Breathe by Jennifer R. Hubert. Such a Rush by Jennifer Eccles. The Name of the Star by Maureen Johnson. Blood Red Road by Maura Young. Anna Dressed in Blood by Kendara Blake. Dash and Lily's Book of Dares by Rachel Kahn and David Levithan. Small Town Sinners by Melissa Walker. Shatter Me by Tahara Moffey. Life After by Sarah Darren Littman. The Body Finder by Kimberly Durting. You Against Me by Jenny Downham. Bunheads by Sophie Flack. Unearthly by Cynthia Hand. Eve, Evie by Anna Carey. I think it's Eve. Delirium by Lauren Oliver. A Need So Beautiful by Suzanne Young. Falling for Hamlet by Michelle Ray. Babe in Voiland by Jody German. And Forgive My Fence by Cheryl Lynn Childs. Now the paperback section in my TBR desk. I'm going to take the butterfly and the hourglass off for a little bit. And we start with A Long Long Sleep by Anna Sheehan. Sheehan. An art copy that I won last year. Looking for Alaska by John Green. Willow by Julia Hobbin. Touch of Frost by Jennifer Stepp. And Kiss of Frost by Jennifer Stepp. Books 1 and 2 in the series, I bought them because they look really cool and really original, and I just want to start with the series s- as soon as possible. XVI by Julia Carr, Crash Into Me by Albert Boris, Stupid Fast by Jeff Herbach, Herbach? What? Personal Demons, the first book in the Personal Demon series, 
Original Sin, the second book, and Last Ride, which is the third and final book in the Personal Demon series, all of them by Lisa Desrochers. And last, Love Story by Jennifer Eccles. Now, in the tall book section, we have The Night Circus by Erica Morgenstern, Days of Blood and Starlight, which is the second book in the Daughter of Smoke and Bone series, and Daughter of Smoke and Bone, which is book one, both by Lainey Taylor. Then there's the Tiger's Curse series. We have Tiger's Curse, which is book one, Tiger's Quest, book two, Tiger's Voyage, book three, and Tiger's Destiny, book four. In my little used book section, I have my Perks of Being a Wallflower movie, um, also The Melancholy Death of Oyster Boy and Other Stories by Tim Burton, which is not a used book. I bought it at the Lagma Museum in LA in the exhibition of Tim Burton. It was fantastic. I loved having an insight into his brain. And the book's pretty disturbing, considering that they are kid stories. Then The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald, which used to be a library copy. And I love that cover. I love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Jellico Road by Melina Marchetta. And my 20-year-old copy of Wallace and Edward Letters 1931-1937, The Intimate Correspondence of the Duke and Duchess of Windsor. Now my top shelves. In this shelf I have first the Perfect Chemistry series. First, there's Perfect Chemistry, which I enjoyed enormously. Rules of Attraction, which I actually liked even more than Perfect Chemistry. And Chain Reaction, which is the third and final book in the series, and I have not read it yet, I cannot believe it. But I am hoping it's even better than Rules of Attraction and Perfect Chemistry. And that's the Perfect Chemistry series, all of them by Simon Alcalas, of course. And then I have the Leaving Paradise series, also by Simon Alcalas. There's Leaving Paradise, book one and Return to Paradise, which is book two and the last one in the series. Then for Darkness Shows the Stars by Diana Paterfreund, Paterfreund, what? Which is an advanced reader's copy I won. Through to You by Emily Hinesworth, also an ARC that I won. Then there's the Complete Thrall Trilogy by Amanda Hodkin, starting with Switched, then Torn, and last, Ascend. Then Wake, the first book in the Water Song series, also by Amanda Hodkin. Illuminate by Amy Agresti. Wintertown by Stephen Emmond. Emmond. Dreaming Anastasia by Joy Preble. Ashes of Twilight by Cassie Tyler. Timeless by Alexandra Monier. Monier? Uses for Boys by Erica Lorraine. Gone, Gone, Gone by Alexander Moskowitz. Tempest by Julie Cross, which is also an arc that I won. Artichoke's Heart by Suzanne Supli. 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 An advanced copy of Wonderstruck by Brian Selznick. An advanced copy of Seraphina by Rachel Hartman. Descended by Blood by Angeline Case. Jessica's Guides to Dating on the Dark Side by Beth Fantaski. Sweet Evil by Wendy Higgins. The Dark Divine by Brita Spain. And The Lost Saint, also by Brita Spain, which is the second book in the Dark Divine series. Why a lemon? Because we were walking randomly through the streets of LA, and there was a box that just had a ton of lemons, and it just said, Grab a lemon! So if life randomly puts a box of lemons on the street, you pick one and you do not question where it came from or if it's poisoned. You simply put it on your shelves and never touch it again. In the top shelf I have, first, The Book of Broken Hearts by Sarah Oakler, which is the book in which she named her main character after me. And, well, I'll say it again, in case you didn't know, my name is in that book. You probably do know because I annoyed the heck out of everyone posting the letter in every social media network I had. But it's just so freaking great and amazing. Easy by Tamara Weber, which is a book I absolutely adored. Sealed my love for new adult books. Bought it on Kindle and then I just had to have it on paperback. An advanced copy of Don't Stop Now by Julie Halpern. The actual cover is that one. 
An advanced copy of Skinny by Donna Connor. Between the Lines by Jody Picoult and Samantha Van Leer. Just One Day by Gail Foreman. The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. Next, the Shadow and Bone series. Starting with Shadow and Bone. And then Sieg and Storm, both by Leith Bardugo. Eleanor in Part by Rainbow Rowell. Rowell? Rowell. Every Day by David Levithan. 172 Hours on the Moon by Johan Harstead. Forget Me Not by Carly Dean. Oh god, I want to read that one so bad. The Fifth Wave by Rick Yancey. Out of the Easy by Ruta Sepetis. Sepetis? Sepetis? This is What Happy Looks Like by Jennifer E. Smith. Dust Lands, book two in the Rebel Heart series by Maura Young. In Honor by Jesse Kirby. I'm gonna take Buddha out for a second. First Comes Love by Katie Kavinsky, which I absolutely adored. Me and Earl and the Dying Girl by Jesse Andrews. Eat, Pray, Love by Elizabeth Gilbert. Level 2 by Lenore Appelins, Appelins. And The Summer I Turned Pretty by Jenny Han. Hated that book. And Buddha Goes Back In. Now on the Target mini shelf. In my first section of mini books, I have Forget You by Jennifer Eccles, Going Too Far, also by Jennifer Eccles, Tricks by Ellen Hopkins, Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, Not That Kind of Girl by Cioba Bivian, and Cloaked by Alex Flynn. Now, on this side, I have my little Hunger Games collection. First, The Hunger Games, then Catching Fire, and Mockingjay, all of them by Suzanne Collins. Fun fact, I only read The Hunger Games. I never continued with the series. Ah I will continue with it, though, because of the movies. I, I cannot watch Catching Fire without actually reading Catching Fire first. Then my mini Courtney Summers books. I have Some Girls Are, which is the first book I read by her, and it was just a fearless, flawless piece. Oh, eh. And Fall For Anything, which was just... Bleh. Also, my brain sort of collapsed with the ending of this novel. Now, the top part. First, I have... The... Oh. My stereo. <laughs> no. That was my iPod and my stereo singing to me. Calling me a murderer. First, I have the mini book called Dream. I have no idea who wrote it. Well, it's actually Believe in the Power of a Dream. I bought it, I don't know, six, seven years ago. I was walking through a flea market and I saw it and um, it had a really pretty necklace, which I already lost, attached to it. And I asked how much and it was just one dollar. So I said, give it to me. Then I have Something Like Normal by Trish Dollar. Dollar. Then I have Divergent. And the collector's edition of Insurgent, both by Bernie Groth. Then there's Falling Kingdoms by Morgan Rods. And Throne of Glass, which you also can't see very good. Here it is. Putting them back in place. And this part I have The Things Trees Know by Douglas Wood, which I bought when I went to see the Sequoia. Is that how you say it? Se Sequoia? Woods in San Francisco. And here's my mini collection of Ellen Hopkins hardcover books. I have Tilt, which has to be one of my favorite covers of all time. With the light, it shines and it just looks really fantastic. And is it my imagination or is that a face? Like here are the cheekbones and the lips. I don't know. Impulse and Perfect, which is actually a sequel to Impulse? Well, I think it's shelved as a companion novel, but, well, it's a sequel. Cut by Patricia McCormick, which is a book that really helped me through my recovery. It's a really, really great book. The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chavosky. I think that's how you say it. And an advanced copy of Never 18 by Megan Bostick, which I won. Had no idea that book was so thin, but it seems like a really sad story and I'm a bit scared to start it, but I really want to read it. And this is going to sound really weird, but I am ridiculously proud of how this little section turned out. It's greens, then reds, then purplish-bluish. They are light colors. 
I cannot believe I had three fat hardcover mini books and three really really thin paperback mini books to match. I must sound like a freak to you. I'm really proud. Yay! You made it to the end! Hopefully the video was entertaining for you. And I mentioned I had some trouble editing, but honestly it was really really complicated because when I was filming the tour, I talked about every single book that I mentioned. I would give one or two commentaries about books I about where I had bought them, what I had thought about them, if I hadn't read them, why I hadn't read them, um, if they were good, if they were bad, and I was just talking about all of my books and I ended up with over three hours of footage. So when I started editing, I realized that my video was going to be huge. So I had to edit so much stuff out and just leave it as simple and as dynamic as I possibly could. I discovered, or more like realized, that I really, really, really like to talk about books, obviously. But yes, I, I really wanted to talk about many of the books here and I didn't get a chance to do so. What I thought is that maybe I would do some mini-series of videos talking about series I really like, series I didn't finish, um, books that I think are really underrated, and just talk a bit more about my books in general because I really enjoyed filming it, but sadly I couldn't fit it into this video. Because I personally love watching bookshelf tours, but I know that they can get tedious sometimes, so I wanted to avoid that with mine. Hopefully I was successful. And if you would like to know anything about any book in particular, just ask me in the comments. And if you are interested in knowing more about my books, maybe I can film a much more detailed book tour and like parts, like going through each shelf or I don't know, they're just little ideas. Let me know in the comments. But all in all, I really, really hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you like my books and how I arranged them. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye! Well, this is the very top of the bookshelf and I had to take the little jack off. <laughs> no! Ow! By Joy Brown! <laughs> Alexandra oh, by Julie Cross. Oh. Between the Lines by Joy P. Colton. <laughs>